Hi, this is Dr. Kurt Wohler for Integrative Medicine Academy. The title of this video is Quinolinic Acid. What is it and consequences of elevated levels? So this is a little bit more of an advanced topic when it comes to organic acid assessment. Um, but don't let that shy away from learning this material. It's an important marker to understand off of the organic acid test. We're specifically looking here at a couple examples under the neurotransmitter metabolites. Quinolinic acid off the Great Plains, organic acid, some other labs will list it as the, the base form, what's called the conjugate base as quinolinate, for example. Any elevated level is significant. Now, fortunately, it's not a marker that's commonly elevated, but you need to keep an eye out for it because sometimes it'll be a marker that is easily overlooked. And if you don't understand what quinolinic is about, then you're not going to be able to do some intervention. And that could be a meaningful thing for people a lot of times with mental health and neurological problems. <clears throat> So the biochemistry of quinolinic acid is a bit complicated, but if we just sort of get a general idea about what's involved, it kind of give us some insight to what this thing does and what it means when it's elevated. So we don't have to necessarily remember every chemical name or all the different steps, but just a couple key concepts are important. So here is quinolinic acid at the lower left hand corner of this particular slide. And one of the things that it does is it helps to synthesize a chemical called NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And that's an important chemical because it's involved in different enzymatic reactions and even involved in uh, aspects of cell metabolism. Up top, we have tryptophan. Now, tryptophan can become serotonin, but tryptophan sits kind of at a crossroads biochemically. Tryptophan can be pulled into what's called the kynorenic quinolinic acid pathway by various stressors. So interferon, for example, from a viral infection or cortisol from stress or other Im immune stimulatory activity because of a chronic infection can increase the activity of an enzyme called indolamine 2,3-dioxygenase. Increases of this IDO cause tryptophan to get pulled into the kynorenic quinolinic acid pathway. And in part, that kind of makes sense because if our body is stressed and we need to upregulate cell metabolism, we could do that in part through the production of NAD. <clears throat> but there's a dark side to too much quinolinic acid as well. Here's a different view of this. So here is tryptophan. And here you sit, sort of see in the middle of this uh, chart or this reaction or this pathways is quinolinic acid. So here is niacin as nicotinic acid and niacinamide is nicotinamide. And here is our NAD. Okay, so nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. So in order to get NAD supported, we do need to support it with tryptophan. So tryptophan can actually get pulled again into the quinolinic acid pathway by increased activity of the IDO enzyme that could occur from chronic infections or stress, and that goes to support the production of NAD. NADP, by the way, is interesting because it's actually linked off of the glucose metabolic pathway called glycolysis. There's a pathway called the pentose phosphate pathway. And in part, what that does is helps to regenerate glutathione. So again, quinolinic acid sort of sits at a crossroads here biochemically, as does tryptophan. Now, what ends up happening with quinolinic acid is that quinolinic acid can actually stimulate receptors in our brain called NMDA receptors. And NMDA receptors are kind of made famous or well-known, I should say, in the world of Alzheimer's disease because increased NMDA receptor activity can lead to neuron degeneration. And there are certain medications which help to regulate NMDA receptor activity. When the NMDA receptor is activated, we get an increase or influx of calcium into the nerve cell. And that has a whole series of reactions. 
one of the things it can do is drive oxidative stress. And that oxidative stress could damage lipids or proteins or DNA, for example. It could even directly damage mitochondria, all of this leading to what's called apoptosis or suicide of that cell, for example. Now, this is a very complicated slide. One of my favorite slides to use in my course material for organic acid uh, test um, training, lecturing, for example. So we're not going to go through all of this, but let me just point out a couple things. Here is our calcium. Here is our NMDA receptor. Now, notice we've got quinolinic acid, right? So quinolinic acid can positively stimulate the NMDA receptor, which sort of opens it up. So the, the receptor opens up and causes an influx of calcium to enter the cell. And we know that that can generate oxygen species reactivity or free radical or, or oxygen radical formation that can go off to create other toxic compounds. We can damage mitochondria, which compromises our production of ATP. This increased calcium can trigger lipases, which start to break down the phospholipids that make up the cell membrane, leading to arachidonic acid, which has its own free radical formation effects. That stimulates reactive oxygen species that exit the neuron cell. Here's the synapse. Okay, so this space right here would be the synapse. And we've got glial cells that help to regulate glutamate because the NMDA receptor is also a glutamate receptor. So glutamate can also positively stimulate that receptor. So these reactive oxygen species can end up damaging the glial cells, which help to regulate glutamate. So if we decrease glutamate uptake from the glial cells, now we have an increased amount of glutamate in the synapse, which just positively or increases the stimulation of the NMDA receptor, causing an even a greater increase of intracellular calcium. Also, what ends up happening is that quinolinic acid will also decrease glutamate uptake. So if we take a look at this, is we can see that there's a number of reactions that can occur because of the presence of quinolinic acid. And quinolinic acid, we know, is a main trigger or stimulator of NMDA receptor activity that causes an influx of calcium into the cell, which ultimately can lead to, you know, intracellular damage of different organelles, mitochondria, for example, uh, and it can also block glutamate uptake. Now, one of the other things about quinolinic acid is it can complex with iron to create an iron quinolinic complex, which generates more free radicals that cause lipid peroxidation of the outer cell membrane. And that's going to clearly affect function of ion exchange and communication between cells. So not only are we adversely affecting the outside of the neuron, but we're affecting mechanisms inside the neuron potentially with increasing amounts of quinolinic acid. So all of that can occur. So the, when the elevation is seen on the organic acid test, it doesn't tell you why it's happening, but you know that it's elevated for a reason that's generally being driven by a chronic infection, chronic stress, for example. It could be a niacin deficiency because clearly we need uh, to have uh, adequate niacin to make nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide for cell metabolism. And in part, we support niacin metabolism with tryptophan. So a lot to think about with regards to quinolinic acid, a lot to think about with regards to this marker off the organic acid test. Now, as I mentioned, these are topics that we get into in our organic acid test training. The essential oat mastery course through our Integrated Medicine Academy discusses some of the fundamental aspects of OAT implementation into practice, going over the more common markers that you will see in a wide variety of patients. Our advanced OAT mastery course is at an advanced level. We go through every marker on the OAT, including quinolinic acid, and look at all the different angles of why things can be elevated. 
And so the essential Oat Mastery course is an introduction which then allows an individual to take the advanced Oat Mastery course. You're welcome to take the advanced Oat Mastery course at any time, but it's highly recommended to at least have some basic knowledge of the foundations of organic acid testing. Both of these courses are available through our Integrated Medicine Academy. We also have a health practitioner support website called functionalmedicineclinicalrounds.com. This is not a course, but there is educational material in this membership website. As a healthcare practitioner, you can schedule one-on-one -on -one consults with myself, my partner, Dr. Trencatella, for lab reviews, case analysis, clinical troubleshooting, etc. There's also a member form for ongoing questions and answers and a lot of other material within this site. For more information, you can go to functionalmedicineclinicalrounds.com. We also have a series of videos and downloadable documents that are called clinical data sheets. These are one page PDF documents that profile different lab tests, different lab markers for just ongoing educational material. If you have any additional questions about our mastery courses through Integrative Medicine Academy, you can email to integrativemedicineacademy at gmail.com, or you can also visit our website at integrativemedicineacademy.com. Again, this is Dr. Kurt Wohler for Integrative Medicine Academy. Thank you.